Hello everyone, this is Kyle Randall Tanzik from Michigan Medieval. Today we're going to be looking at The Art of Defense on Foot by Charles Roworth in 1789. Um, this is from around the time of the Napoleonic era, which is technically from 1799 to 1815. But like this is the, one of the quintessential Napoleonic era British swordsmanship manuals, so we're not going to split hairs here. Um, to give you a little bit about my personal biases before we get into this book review, is that I really like British sources, and I am a native English speaker, as you can probably tell. Um, so let's have a look at the um, overall book's appearance and image quality. I really like the look of this kind of classic book cover looking thing. Um, if this is hardcover, it would look awesome. Might look more like this. Kind of like old fangled looking book. That would be cool. But like, hey, it's a soft cover book. <laughs> you know, it's a cheap textbook, so no big deal. Um... One thing that I would point out is that there is no title on the front of this book, which is a little weird. There's a title on the spine, but sometimes I'll be like my students, like, hey, you should buy this book. And they're like, what the heck even is that book? Um, so that's a little weird, but well, whatever, it looks cool. Um, the images are a little faded, but they're humongous. So every, well, a couple of them are a little faded. Like maybe that's a little bit grayed out looking, but they're huge. So it's really not an issue. Um, the uh, text occasionally is a little bit smudgy because this is, I believe it's a scan and not a, uh, like a transcription or anything. So a little bit smudgy from time to time, but that's not a fault of the, <laughs> this publisher. I think it's just the original book looked a bit like that. So anyway, um, okay. Um, durability, not great. Um, you can see that it's, uh, you know, just a paper book cover. So here's my tip of the day. If you go to Ikea, Ikea has book covers like this. They fit on this row worth copy perfectly. Maybe it's because they're both uh, in metric, <laughs> like centimeters or something. I don't know. But it fits great. So buy one of those. Um, yeah, the binding is just glued in. Again, paper cover. Pages are, you know, pretty standard. It's a, it's a trade paperback book. Um, so durability, it's a, not great. Um, okay, transcription. Again, I think this is the original scan. Um, and so it has this S to F switch thing. <laughs> where Let's see if we can find one. Um, right there it says slip, but it looks like it says flip. Um, <laughs> that's just a, a part of, um, uh, 18th century English language books. Um, and so otherwise it's completely, uh, readable by a modern English speaker. Um, you'll be fine. You get used to it. Um, I find that if you read the, <laughs> if you read it really quick, your brain just sorts out the S and F thing and you'll be fine. Um, okay. Practicality. Does it stay open? No, unfortunately, no. Um, does it have a good table of contents? Um, yes, it does. It has a very good table of contents, I would say. Um, which is three pages long of table of contents. That's great. Um, very practical in that way. Um, uh, does the picture line up with the text so you're not flipping back and forth? Generally speaking, it's pretty good. Here's a bad example of where it doesn't. Um, there's another one. But generally speaking, it's like this, where it's like one page will have like, you know... The Spadroon Guard, and there's a man in the Spadroon Guard, like, lined up perfectly. Generally speaking, you know, Inside Guard, Second Position, there it is right there. Generally speaking, it's pretty good, but there's a couple of ones that it's a little annoying. Um, portable size. I like the size of this book. It's small. I can put it in my pocket almost. Um, but it has these massive pictures in it, which is honestly great, because I can don't have to worry about lugging around a huge book. But then I also have, um, you know, these giant pictures I can hold up as references to show my students so I can lay this on the ground, you know, with like something laying it down like that and look at it while I stand next to the book and kind of do go back and forth. So giant pictures, huge, uh, you know, pictures, small scale book. That's exactly what I look for. It's exactly what I want. Me personally. Um, what else? Uh, there's no history at the beginning of this book um, for context or anything. There's just a little a few pages about talking about how the book got published and why the transcription and our various things were done the way they were or whatever, or scans, I should say. Um, but yeah, it's fine. You bring a second book with you some, with some history in it and you'll be beautiful. Okay. Cost 25 to 30 bucks, depending on where you get it from. Um, this book must be harder to find because I find the shipping on this is kind of expensive compared to a lot of other books I've looked at, um, from any source, but yeah, you're going to find this from a specialty HEMA shop or from Amazon, but probably with some higher shipping. But again, um, what do you get for your money? 110 pages, tons of illustrations, or should I say a decent amount of illustrations. The original scan, um, maybe this is slightly expensive. Um, you know, 25, 30 bucks with some heavy shipping. 
maybe this is slightly expensive for a, a, a smallish book, but it's an obscure textbook, so like, we can't complain. Uh, the fact that it's available to us at all is something I'm grateful for. Moving on. Uh, my overall closing thoughts on this are, um, this book is awesomely practical. Um, I really can't praise it enough in that way. The big picture is a small scale, loaded with content. Okay, this is a great source for beginners. Um, it really starts you from the very beginning, how to hold your sword, how to stand, basic parries, that sort of thing. Great for beginners. If you're an advanced practitioner, you will be satisfied with the fact that this is just the raw scan, that there's no um, interpretations to contend with. It's just the raw scan, and you can read it yourself. Um, I think if you're an advanced practitioner, you'll be, you'll be satisfied with that. Um, if you are someone who is just a Napoleonic era enthusiast, this book is a novelty. Um, you will find it entertaining. Um, buy this book for that person. <laughs> They'll like it. Um, the most important thing I would add in, as a closing thought here um, is if you are a student of other British military swordsmanship systems, if you do Highland Broadsword or Hutton or whatever, um, this book um, explains a lot of the terminology and the techniques and things in a wording that I think is really agreeable to a modern English speaker. Um, and so this could be used potentially to fill in some gaps in your interpretation. Um, yeah, I, th I think this would help for sure. So if you do other British military sources, it might be worth picking up a copy of this Roworth uh, manual and reading it to f just to fill in some gaps um, that you might have. So uh, thanks for listening. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, follow us on Facebook. Uh, you know what to do. Uh, train safely, guys. Thanks for listening.